guys, it's my kid Cranberry, and I'm back again to talk about how to interview for the right individuals for your new business, okay? So building the right team, it all starts with making sure you're interviewing the right people. So it's important to spend a lot of time finding the right person versus hurry up and trying to just fulfill the position. So you want to make sure that you invest money into job ads like um, Career Builder, LinkedIn, Glassdoors, and try to stray away from places like Craigslist, where that way you can bring in more quality of people, the better quality of people, okay? So with that being said, um, when interviewing, both soft skills and technical skills are both equally important. Now, I'm not going to really talk about the technical skills today because every job requires different technical skills, but the soft skills are universal and can be applied to every single industry. Now, either way it goes, when interviewing, you want to follow a structure when it comes to interviewing. Um, I like to have my first interview based off of a 15-minute phone call. I use this phone call as more of like a resume screening just to make sure that the qualifications line up before I spend time physically meeting them in person. So this means it could be a 15-minute phone call asking them basic, basic questions along the lines of where do they live, where are they from, are they okay with the commute, um, what are they looking for in the next position, going over my company history as well, just a, a quick meet and greet. Now, if I like the person, then I will pass them on to the second round interview, which will be in person in the office. Um, now, this interview is st still quick as well. It could be 20 minutes, 30 minutes long. But if you don't have an office, you can also meet at a cafe like Starbucks or just somewhere in a professional setting. Now, the third interview I only have if I'm on the fence um, about that person. Maybe I have another candidate that showcases equally the same amount of skill set. So I'm kind of on the fence. So I'll have that third interview, but I'll also bring someone else with me, like a, another manager or a business partner. That way they can help gauge that person as well. So soft skills to look for when interviewing. Um, the first skill that I look for is communication. So it all starts with email etiquette. So as you schedule the interview, there's a series of emails that will be going back and forth to make sure that you guys can meet at the appropriate time and location, right? So during that time, I see, you know, are they responding to my email within 24 hours or are they taking a week or several days to respond back to the email? That I can already gauge automatically if the person has good communication skills. Now, once they arrive to the interview, are they showing up 15 minutes prior to the interview or do they run into the door right at 9 a.m., right when the interview is scheduled? Okay. Now, the next thing that I gauge um, as far as communication is body language, simple body language. We can always go back to the basics. Whenever you shake their hand for the first time, is it a, a confident, firm handshake or is it a frill handshake where they're not even looking at you in the eyes? Eye contact is huge when it comes to communication. Body language is everything. So when they're interviewing you, when you're asking them questions, you know, are they slouching? Are they kind of looking down? Or are they leaning forward and they're confident with what they're, what you're, what they're trying to explain to you? Um, now, communication, and once again, besides body language, it's kind of hard sometimes to gauge it in an interview process. You can also ask them simply, you know, when they, if they had a time in the past that they had an issue with a customer or a client, and how did they deal with it, and how did they communicate with them effectively? Okay. Now, the next positive or the next skill set that I look for um, is positive attitude. One of the most important skill sets you can possibly have um, when interviewing for a position. So is the candidate enthusiastic about the job? Do they come in smiling, excited, ready to go? They're eager. You can tell that they're probably trying a little bit hard for the role. That's always a good thing because that energy will be carried into the workplace and will be positively affecting other people that work in, in your office as well, right? So an easy way to gauge their positivity as well, if you can't tell if they're enthusiastic or not, ask them about their previous position. So I love this question because I'll always ask about their previous boss and see how they respond to it. If they're like, oh, I hate them, they're horrible, they're the worst person ever, nine times out of 10, they're probably, if the position doesn't work out here, they're gonna say the same thing about me, right? So I gauge their, their negative or positive responses off of their previous work experience. If they're talking about how even though it didn't work out, um, they learned so much from the position and they wanna apply that here, that's such a great sign. Now, the next um, soft skill I, I really want to focus on is teamwork and cooperation. Okay? So if I look at this person, do I feel like they'll fit into the company culture? Do I feel like they'll fit in with the other team members I have? Because that's very important. You want to make sure that you have a group of people that are similar, pretty much like-minded when it comes to hitting goals. All right? So a question I'll ask them is just, do they prefer working in a group or independently? 
such a basic question, but you can also see what their, where their mind's at, where their work ethic is at. So if they say independently, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you also want to follow up with a group question, a group setting question. If they say it's 50% halfway each way, that's perfect. Um, if they say they only want to work in a team setting, that's okay too, because um, they, they know that the role will still involve them to work independently. The next soft skill I look at is if they're goal oriented. So what, you know, do they see this job as a way to hit their goals? That's huge because I know it's a startup business. I have goals to hit. I have places I want to go. And I want to make sure that my team members that I surround myself with are like-minded as well. Okay. So you can ask them, um, you know, what is their, their long-term goals or short-term, long-term goals? What are they looking for in this position? Are they looking just to collect a quick paycheck? Are they looking just to add something to their resume? Or are they really looking to help you get to the next level as well? The next skill set is flexibility. So with a startup company, there's a lot of things that you'll need to be flexible about, right? There's a lot of changes, a lot of things you'll need to implement, change, take away, add, whatever the case is. So you need someone that can be flexible to different situations. You need someone um, that if an unexpected problems come up, that they're able to adapt and change eff efficiently and just move on to the next thing. So I love the question, you know, if you have a flat tire, what do you do? And if the person says, fix it and move on, I'm like, bingo, you're the right candidate for me, right? Now, the second to last skill set I want to go over is creativity. So with any business, no matter what industry it is, whether it's oil and gas, marketing, um, real estate, you need someone on your team that's creative. You know, as a new business, there's going to be so many new innovative ways to make your business more successful. You need someone that kind of thinks out of the box a little bit, right? Now, this isn't really a make or break because we do have, you do need people that are a little bit straightforward thinking, that's okay. But... Someone that is more creative will help progress you as well into starting up your new business. And the last skill set that I really look for is overall organization. So organization is such a key vital skill set you need to have to be successful in any position. Um, so if they're organized, that means they probably have good time management skills as well. So in the interview, I look at, you know, how are they presenting their resume? Is it kind of like crumbled up? I'm like folded up in their pocket or is it coming like in a nice portfolio or a folder that they hand to? Um, how are they organized with just like their, their belongings? You know, are they storing their stuff on the floor? You know, are they setting it in a nice area? Um, and then I just can ask them a question too if I can't gauge it off of that is how do they prioritize their work day every single day? Do they use Google Calendar? Um, do they use task lists on their phone? Do they physically write it down? It doesn't matter which way they use to keep up with their notes, but I just like to make sure that they have a certain um, method that they use to make sure they're on point with their organization every single day. And just a few things to keep in mind whenever you're interviewing for the right candidate. Make sure you always take notes when interviewing that person, okay? One, it shows professionalism. It shows that you're listening. But two, as you interview more candidates, um, you start to forget people and they start to mesh together. So you want to make sure that you have the different notes on each resume so that way you can correctly organize it and see which candidate works best for the role. You want to also make sure that the interview is very conversational. So the interview shouldn't be looking at a checklist like, okay, you have this. We have this, you have this. It should be a back and forth conversation. So as you ask them a question, they answer it, and then you follow up afterwards before going into your next question. That will make the interviewer feel a lot more, um, the interviewee feel a lot more confident, a lot more at ease. And that way that person can express more what they're looking for as well versus just answering yes or no. You want to check with your staff as well. So if the candidate um, previously spoke to somebody else on your team, um, maybe your business partner answered the phone when they called for an interview. Maybe you have a secretary um, in your office that introduced them whenever they walked into the doors. See how they responded. You know, I get a lot of people that sometimes will come in my lobby and have a, a huge attitude or whatever the case is. Um, but then when they see me, they're super excited and all professional and everything. When really, in reality, if the same way you treat my receptionist is the same way you're going to treat us down the line. So I always look at, I always check with my staff, seeing how people respond to them before they even meet with me. Um, remember to remember their name. So that's huge. A lot of times we do interview a lot of people, or maybe we have a lot going on where we don't take the time to remember the person that we just interviewed. But if you have a second follow-up interview, a second or a third one, you want to make sure that you lead into the interview with knowing their name ahead of time. And the last thing is don't settle. Okay, so there's a lot of people in the job market, there's a lot of people looking for jobs. 
I guarantee you, you will 100% find the right people for your business. Make sure you just don't settle because they just have a few qualifications on their resume or because you just need someone to, to fill the job, right? If Even if it takes you having to spend your weekends fulfilling that role to get the job done, that's better than just having someone that's going to be half ass, excuse my French, um, for that role. And then eventually it just kind of your, your business is going to crumble from there. So don't settle. Spend the time finding the right people. That way you can start growing on the right foot.